Shenley Laboratories, producer of Penicillin Shenley and Shenley Pharmaceuticals, presents the Encore Theater. The Encore Theater play tonight, Men in White. Our star is Robert Taylor. Tonight, Shenley Laboratories presents another in a new series of great dramatic programs. Some of our stories are fact, the struggles and accomplishments of great men of medicine. Others are fiction. Stories of devotion to an ideal, individual heroism or courage. By these programs, Shenley Laboratories would remind you that medical science and progress is not cold, impersonal research or pages of statistics, but a warm human story told in living terms. Whether it's the life of one of medicine's immortals or the everyday record of service rendered by your own physician. Now, Men in White, starring Robert Taylor as Dr. George Ferguson. The library of St. George's Hospital, where the men in white gather to read, to smoke, and to discuss many things, primarily medicine. In a niche high on the wall is a marble bust of Hippocrates, the father of medicine, looking down in kindly benediction. At the base of the bust is engraved a quotation from his precepts. Where the love of man is, there also is the love of the art of healing. Dr. Hochberg, I was looking for you. Good morning, George. Down in the record room this morning, the first 45 cases seem to bear you out. What 45 cases? What are you two up to? Oh, Ferguson and I are doing a little research. I have some crazy notions about modern surgical technique. Ferguson's writing a paper to prove that I'm right. As a matter of fact, Dr. Hochberg is writing the paper. I'm just helping collect the data and arrange. <laughs> You're doing all the hard work. How's 217? Yeah, pretty restless during the night, but her temperature's down to normal now. Good. And Ward B, bed three? Oh, fine. Ask for a drink of whiskey. <laughs> He'll be all right. Yeah, he is all right. I gave him the drink. <laughs> it won't hurt him. You know, I'm beginning to think George is your prize pupil. He's definitely teacher's pet. He's a good boy. When are you going east, George? In three months. Looking forward to it? You bet I am. It's uh, it's more than just an opportunity to study in New York. It's going to be my honeymoon, too. Well, you'll find it difficult mixing the two. I know the medical center. It's going to be very difficult. You don't know Laura. <laughs> After a year in New York, I'm working with Dr. Hochberg, so the real labor won't begin till I come back. <laughs> You're probably right about that. I uh, want you to meet Laura. You'll be crazy about her. As a matter of fact, maybe I can bring her by here tonight. We're going out to a shindig of some sort. Tonight? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, Ferguson, but I'm afraid you'll have to stick around tonight. I just saw 401. He's a mighty sick boy. He may need another transfusion. Tonight? Yeah. We have three donors on call. Well, I'm sorry, Dr. Gordon, but uh, this is my night out, and Laura's made arrangements, so I'm afraid I won't be here. Ferguson, when the hospital needs you... I'd like to, Dr. Hochberg, but same thing happened last week. I can't disappoint my fiancé again, or I, I won't have any. Can anyone else do the transfusion, Dr. Gordon? I'm afraid not. Ferguson's followed the case from the start. He knows the veins we've used. George, I know I'm imposing, but I want this boy to have every possible chance. He's a sick boy. What do you say? All right, Dr. Gordon, I'll stay, of course. Thanks. If your girl kicks up a fuss, send her around to me. I'll tell her about my wife. Up at 4.30 this morning to answer the phone. Somebody had a bellyache. <laughs> Calling Dr. Gordon. Uh, Surgery. Calling Dr. Gordon. I'll see you later, George. It's tough, George, but I'm sure she'll understand. I don't know whether she will or not. She's been asked to understand so much lately. Dr. Ferguson, you're wanted in emergency immediately. A woman just came in. Serious automobile accident. Get her up to the operating room. Yes, doctor. Will you watch Dr. Hochberg? Of course. She 
you'll be all right, George. You did a nice job. Oh, thanks. I was glad you were there. I feel much safer with you at my elbow. Oh, you didn't need me at all. <laughs> Dr. Ferguson, uh, Miss Hudson's waiting in the reception room for you. Oh, thank you. Tell her I'll be right in. Hope I do as well with Laura, Dr. Hockberg. Don't worry, you will. Laura loves you. And a woman in love should have an infinite capacity for understanding. Uh, sometimes a woman in love has an infinite capacity for misunderstanding. <laughs> Darling. Hello, monkey. <laughs> oh, you know, it suddenly occurred to me that I hadn't been kissed for three weeks now and that I couldn't wait another minute, not even until tonight. Well, we'll take care of that right away. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Hey, where'd you get that hat? Well, don't you like it? Oh, sure, sure. It looks just like a vegetable salad. Oh, <laughs> you know, you're getting too thin and your eyes are tired. Well, I didn't get much sleep last night. It was a pretty sick house. I missed you last night. I went to the party, but... It wasn't any fun. Didn't mean a thing without you. You know, darling, I, I don't seem to get a kick out of life anymore unless you're around. That's not very often, is it? Well, darling, we'll make up for all of that later on, honestly. I don't know if we can, George. Last night's gone, and... Well, if I had you every minute from now on, it wouldn't be enough. I wish I'd lived all my life with you. I wish I'd been born in the same room with you and played in the same streets. Oh, I'm glad you didn't. They were gloomy streets. They might have touched you, changed you. You know, Laura, about... About seven months ago, there was a boy here who had been blind from birth. We operated on him successfully. One night, I showed him the stars for the first time. He looked at them a moment and he began to cry like a baby because, because he said they were so lovely. He might never have seen them. When I look at you, I get something of that same feeling. Dr. Ferguson, calling Dr. Ferguson. Oh, don't answer it. Don't go. It's my call. I have to go. Well, I, I have to get to my hairdressers anyhow Make myself beautiful for tonight. Uh, darling, I... Oh, well, we'll have a wonderful evening all to ourselves. We'll skip the party and, and drive up the Hudson. There's a full moon tonight. Laura, I, uh, I can't make it tonight. I have to stay in. Oh, no, not again. Oh, I'm sorry. I tried to duck out of it, but I couldn't. There's a transfusion I have to do. Oh, George, they're overworking. It isn't fair. Oh, I was planning so much on tonight. George, what's our life going to be like? Pretty grand, I should say. <laughs> Darling, don't look like that. We'll go out tomorrow night instead. Oh, it's not just tonight. It's all the nights. George, I, I can take it for another three months, for another year and three months, but when we come back from New York, let's arrange our lives like human beings. You can open up an office and have regular hours and special hours. I work with Hockberg, darling. I won't have the time to go into practice. I, I couldn't go on this way. I just couldn't. I'd rather break off now and try to forget you. Laura, don't ever say a thing like that. I'd rather die quickly than by slow torture. Dr. Ferguson, calling Dr. Ferguson. They're calling you. Yes, I know. Ferguson speaking. Yes. Who? South 218, yes. We'll call Dr. Cunningham. It's his case. Let him... When? What's her temperature? Pulse. Is she pale and perspiring? Did she ask for food? No, no more insulin. Absolutely, I'll be right down. I have to go now, Laura, and please, please don't worry, darling. Don't, George. Don't kiss me. As bad as that? I'm afraid so, George. Things will straighten themselves How out. How will they? George, George, we've just got to come on to oh, some decision. Oh, Laura, will you please don't... I mean it, absolutely. All right, then we'll come to some decision. Now, if you don't mind too much, I'll have to go. I dislike melodrama very much, but this is a matter of life and death. Put her in shock position, nurse. Yes, sir. Sterile glucose. Quickly. And a 30cc syringe. And glucose, yes, sir, already. How much? 50 grams. Good. Half of that'll do. And apply a tourniquet, right arm. Yes, sir. Call for hot packs and blankets. Come on, hurry it up. Let's have that glucose. Swab the arm. Never mind the iodine, just the alcohol. Thank God there's a good vein. about all we can do. Dr. George. Yes, baby. I, I'm thirsty. I want a drink. Why, well, you bet. Give her some water, nurse. Why, well, I feel funny. Sort of dizzy. What happened? <laughs> Nothing. You fell asleep, that's all. You're going to be all right now, honey. Oh, hello, Dr. Cunningham. I didn't hear you come in. Yeah? I've been watching. That was nice work, Dr. Ferguson. Well, thank you, Dr. Cunningham doctor can always become a better one by observing better ones. I've learned something from you today, Ferguson, and I'm grateful.
Better clean up that mess, nurse. Put those hypos away. Yes, sir. Yeah, what's the matter with you? Oh, I'm sorry. I was I was just nervous, I guess. This is my first case with a sick child. I got to like her an awful lot. I guess that was why. I see. What's your name? Barbara Denon. Well, you're going to be a swell nurse, Barbara. Oh, thank you, Dr. Perkins. Now, you take my advice. I know just how you feel. Nerves all tied up in a knot. You want to yell. <laughs> I feel the same way myself. You get as far away from here tonight as you can. Have a good time. Relax. Forget the hospital. Tomorrow you'll, you'll be all right. Oh, I can't. I haven't examined Materia Medica tomorrow. Materia Medica, huh? Say, I think I have some notes that may help you. I'll leave them with the orderly on the first floor, and you can get them on your way down. Oh, thanks. They might help a bit. At least you won't have to cram all night. <laughs> Dr. Ferguson. Calling Dr. Ferguson. That's your call, Doctor. Yes, I'll see you later. Ferguson. Uh, oh, yes, Dr. Gordon. It won't be necessary for you to stay in tonight after all. 341 died a few moments ago. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, so am I. But we did everything we could. See you later, Ferguson. Outside wire, please. Uh, Walnut, 2990. Yes. Hello, Laura. How are you, dear? Feeling better? Oh. Well, look, darling, I can make it tonight after all. What? <laughs> Don't be silly. But, darling, we'll work all that out. It's not... It's so far away yet. Oh, listen, Laura, that chance to work with Hawkberg is one of the best breaks I've ever had. Don't expect me to throw it over at a moment's notice simply because you have some crazy idea that... Oh, no, no, darling, I, I don't even want to talk about it tonight. I'm, I'm tired, Laura. It's, it's been a heck of a day. Three operations and... Well, I, I can't think. I can't make an important decision tonight in a minute. Oh, Laura, what do you think you're doing? Punishing me? All right, Laura, we'll skip it tonight. I'll see you tomorrow night. Yes. Goodbye. Come in. Excuse me, Dr. Ferguson. I, I'm off now, and I wondered about the notes. The notes? Oh! Oh, yes, of course. Uh... Barbara, you don't really want to work tonight, do you? Well, I don't suppose anyone ever really wants to work. <laughs> Maybe you're right. I, I sometimes wonder myself whether all this is worth the grind of working my way through college and med school. Med school, too? Yes. I don't see how you kept up with classes. Oh, I managed. It wasn't much fun, but still, I guess it's the only thing I really want to do. My dad used to say, above all is humanity. He was a fine man, my dad. Small-town physician, upstate. When I was about 13, he came to my room one night and, and apologized because he was going to die. His heart had gone back on him. He knew that if he gave up medicine and took it easy, he could live for 20 years. But he wanted to go right on, wanted to die in harness. And he did. Yeah. Above all else is humanity. That's, that's a big thought. So big that alongside of it, you and I don't really matter very much. That's why we do it, I guess. It must make you very proud to heal. To save someone's life the way you did that child's today. I don't think there's anything more important in the world. Neither do I. We can't allow outside forces or things or people to interfere with us. Can't We can't do it. And if they do, we've got to bar them out, even if we have to tear our hearts out to do it. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to get up on a soapbox. <laughs> Please don't apologize. I know exactly how you feel. Hey, look, how about putting off the work for a couple hours and going somewhere for dinner with me? You look like an understanding sort of person, and I'm very much in need of a little understanding tonight. Will you come? Of course I will. I'd love to come. A moment we'll return to our heartwarming play, Men in White, starring Robert Taylor. Now, a message of vital importance. Few people realize how widely penicillin is used in dental surgery today. Penicillin, the wonder drug, whose production just a few short years ago was so uncertain, so beset with production difficulties, that only those hovering between life and death could have its healing boon. 
Among the firms which now produce penicillin for use by dentists is Shenley Laboratories. Shenley is also devoting its resources and facilities to the production of specialized penicillin products and to a continuing program of research whose purpose is the discovery and development of an ever greater range of pharmaceuticals. As one of the world's largest users of scientific research in the field of fermentation processes, from which penicillin and related drugs are derived, Shenley Laboratories has developed penicillin tablets and trochees for use in dental practice, penicillin ointment for direct application to affected skin surfaces, and ophthalmic ointment for treating certain infections of the eye. The tangible expressions of Shenley Laboratories' research, Shenley Pharmaceuticals of Highest Quality, are constantly at your doctor's and dentist's disposal in their work of keeping you well. Now, the second act of Men in White, starring Robert Taylor as Dr. Ferguson and with Gigi Pearson as Laura. Laura, what are you doing in the park? Looking for you. They told me at the hospital that you were over here taking a walk. Oh, I had to find you, George. I, I've been miserable these past weeks. Well, it hasn't exactly been a picnic for me. Have you missed me? You know I have. Oh, I thought I could be happy without you. I, I thought I could just snap my fingers and say, Father, oh, heck with it. But there were too many plans, too many dreams, too many memories. I never quite managed to snap my fingers at all. Laura, darling, I've missed you like everything. I've been so darn lonely. And... Why didn't you call me? Well, pride, I guess. Heaven knows I wanted to call. We wasted a lot of time. But we'll make up for it. We're together again. That's the most important thing in the world. <sighs> darling. Oh, uh, Barbara. Hello. I've been looking all over for you. Do you have to break our date for dinner? Well, no. No, I, I guess I can make that, but there is something I've got to talk to you about. Can it wait until tonight? Uh, yes, I, I guess it can wait until tonight. <laughs> Yes, I know. I'm trying to think of how to tell you something. George, these past few weeks we've been going out have been the most wonderful weeks of my life. Well, it was very kind and good of you to go out with me to put up on my mood. Oh, and... Don't talk like that. I've been happy with you. As far as I'm concerned, you've been everything a girl could ever dream about. I think I fell in love with you the first time you smiled at me. After that operation... Because I can't remember anything that happened to me before that moment. Barbara, don't. Please, I... Barbara, I don't, I don't know how to say this. You see, I... I... I'm engaged. Engaged? Yes, I have been for over a year. And that night that you... That we went out, I'd had a quarrel with my fiancé. Oh, I see. Oh, darling, I wouldn't have had this happen for anything. Don't say anything else. I've had a lovely time. And thanks for the buggy ride. You don't mind if I say goodnight, do you, Joe? Yes, I do mind. I want to talk to you. There's nothing more to say. Funny how I thought it was the beginning of everything when I met you. But really, the end. Good night, Joe. Goodbye. <laughs> George, you're going to accept the appointment to practice with Dr. Coleman, aren't you? George. Hmm? Uh, what did you say, Laura? What is it, boy? What's wrong? You've been pacing up and down like a caged animal. I've been here for an hour, and you barely glanced at me. <laughs> you're not a very satisfactory fiancé. I'm sorry, Laura. I've got a lot of things in my mind. He can't accept that appointment, Laura. He isn't ready for it. Well, he will be after a year in New York. You love George, don't you, Laura? Well, you know I do. Then don't influence him wrongly. 
George has been offered this appointment through your father's influence. You don't buy things in medicine, Laura. You earn them. A doctor's character is as important as his skill. The next five years are the crucial years in George's life. They're going to tell whether he becomes an important man or not. It's not as if I were going to drop my studies by going into practice, Dr. Hockberg. I'll keep on. After all, George has worked so terribly hard until now, Hockey, and well, this will make things easier for him. There are no easy roads in medicine. I didn't expect it to be easy. I counted on work, hard work. It will be at least ten years before you're ready for an appointment like that. If he takes it, he'll have regular hours. We'll have some time for ourselves, Hockey. Time? Mm Mm-hmm. How? There are only 24 hours in a day. He's working with me, and if... Or are you, George? Dr. Hochberg, I haven't loafed yet. I don't intend to start now, but Laura and I are young. We love each other. I want a little more out of life than just my work. I don't think that's too much to ask. I see. I see. So you've decided not to come with me next year. Is that it? Well, sir, I... That's all right. You have a right to decide for yourself. Can you come right away, Dr. Hockford? It's an emergency. One of the staff. She took an overdose. Who is it? That nice little girl up in pediatrics, Barbara Denon. I'll go right up. She's unconscious now, but she... She was calling for you, Dr. Ferguson. I'll go with you if I may, Dr. Hockberg. Come along. There's nothing more we can do, George, except wait. Gordon will call us if there's any change. Uh, let's sit down in here a moment. Oh, that poor kid. I never dreamt that she'd... I had to be honest with her. I had to tell her it always had been, Laura. Always would be. You can't blame yourself. People fall in love without rhyme or reason quite often. It isn't your fault. Dr. Hockberg, I'm going to marry Barbara Denon. She'll have me. George, stop talking like an idiot. Pull yourself together. What about Laura? I've been calling her all morning. She must have guessed about Barbara. She wouldn't even come to the phone. Well, George, in a way, that's not the worst that could have happened to you. No, don't say that. It is. Well, now there's work, my boy. Remember, that's the master word. Work. I'm going to marry that girl. I'm going to take care of her. Mid-Victorian idealism won't solve this problem, George. She's human, isn't she? And she needs me. I'm going into practice immediately. You'd give up your trip to New York? Yes. George. George, use your head. You'd, well, you'd ruin the rest of your life. You'd destroy your ambition, your ideals. Fill yourself with bitterness. And you'd, you'd live day and night with a woman who would grow to despise you. And... Dr. Hockberg speaking. Yes, he's here. Who? Oh, all right. Bring her up here to 106. Laura's on her way up. I'll be in Miss Denon's room if you want me. All right. And... Dr. Hockberg, I want you to know, whatever I do, that that I appreciate all you've done for me. I know I must have sounded very ungrateful when Laura and I were talking to you. I know. It's our instinct to live, to enjoy ourselves. All of us. I love Laura so much. She's so so full of life and fun and all the things I've missed for so many years. I just didn't have the guts to give them up. I kidded myself out of the most important thing that ever happened to me. A chance to work with you. Do you still want to? You can, if you do. No, not now. I'm going into practice. If I can't make a go of that, I'll find a job at something else. I won't starve. I'll always make a living. Come in. Hello, Laura. Hello, Doctor. You know uh, where to get me if you want me, George? Yes. George, do you love that girl? I love you, Laura. How can you expect me to believe that? You've been seeing her, haven't you? been spending evenings with her that you could have spent with me. Laura, I went out with her that night. You refused to go out with me. You remember there were several days there that you wouldn't even talk to me, so I took her out a few times. She was a nice kid. She was someone to talk to. Laura, if I hadn't loved you, I wouldn't have asked you to come to New York with me. Alone there, I'd accomplish a lot more. Well, you can go alone now. No, I'm not going at all now. I'm going into practice, and I'm going to marry Barbara. (gasps) Marry her? When you're not in love with her? Yes, I suppose you think you're being brave and strong and making a wonderful gesture. But not. You're a coward. You're doing it because it's the easiest way out. Because you're afraid of what people might say about you. Oh, you have no backbone. You're right, Laura. I had no backbone when I let myself be talked out of a chance to work with hockey. Maybe to do something fine someday. But right now I have no choice. And I'm not doing it because I give a hang what anybody says or thinks. 
I'm doing it because that girl's life is smashed and I'm responsible, and I, I want to try and help her pick up the pieces and put them together again. Oh, George. George, I, I knew how you felt about Hawking. I was wrong to insist. Oh, I have been selfish, but it was only because I loved you so much. Oh, George, darling, I do love you. There could never be anyone else for me. George. What is it? Barbara Denon died. What? Oh, no. A few minutes ago. Oh, darling. Couldn't you do anything, Dr. Hartberg? She was too far gone. We were helpless. Forty years I've spent in medicine, and I couldn't help her. Then what's the use? What good is it all? Why go on? It takes everything from you, and when you need it most, it leaves you helpless. We don't know anything. We're only guessing. George, there isn't a man in medicine who hasn't said what you've just said and meant it for a minute. All of us, George. And you're right. We are groping. Sometimes we're guessing, but... At least our guesses today are closer than they were 20 years ago. And 20 years from now, they'll still be closer. That's what we're here for. Oh, there's so much to be done and so little time in which to do it that one life is never long enough. It's not easy for any of us. But in the end, our reward is something richer than simply living. Maybe it's a kind of success that the world out there can't measure. Maybe it's a kind of glory, George. Yes, question as much as we will. When the test comes, we know, don't we, George? Yes. Yes, we do. Uh, we'll reduce that fracture to ten. Schedule the appendectomy at three, the gastric ulcer immediately afterward. Yes, sir. I'll see you later. Oh, darling, I'm so sorry. George, let's, let's get away from here. Let's go someplace where we can talk this thing over quietly and sanely. No, Laura. This is where I belong. Yes, I, I know it is. I understand. Well, uh, when you come back from New York, if Hawkey will let you off for a night, give me a ring. Hmm? I'll be around and well, maybe someday... Oh, Laura, darling, I, I love you. If you really see things the way you say you do... Oh, I do see Well, then them. marry me and come with me to New York and help me, Laura. Oh, thanks for asking me. Oh, I'd love to. Dr. Ferguson, calling Dr. Ferguson. They're calling you? Will you be here when I get through? I'll be here whenever you get through. In a moment, we'll bring our star, Robert Taylor, back to the microphone. But first, may we leave this thought with you. 24-hour-a-day service... Who but your family physician would give it? There's no knocking off work for him, for he's on call to relieve little and big pains any time you call on him. Shanley Laboratories pays tribute to this unselfish spirit which characterizes members of the medical profession. And to the years, every physician spends acquiring knowledge and experience so that the lot of mankind may be a better and healthier one. And now, here is the star of tonight's play, Robert Taylor. Ladies and gentlemen... To sum up the spirit of the Shenley Laboratories program, this simple and beautiful prayer of the physician, written centuries ago by Maimonides, seems to me be apt and fitting. The eternal providence has appointed me to watch over the life and death of all thy creatures. May I always see in the patient a fellow creature in pain. Grant me strength and opportunity always to extend the domain of my craft. This is the prayer of the physician. It is ages old, yet today... It is as new as the hope for a peaceful way of life for all the world. May we invite you to listen again next week at this same time when Shenley Laboratories presents White Angel, starring Virginia Bruce, a great star in a great story. Good night. Men in White by Sidney Kingsley was produced and directed by Bill Lawrence. It was a Gene Holloway adaptation. Robert Taylor appeared by arrangement of Metro-Golden-Mayer, producers of the Technicolor musical, Easy to Wed. This is Frank Graham speaking for Shenley Laboratories, producer of Penicillin Shenley, and inviting you to listen to the Encore Theater next Tuesday at the same time when you will hear Virginia Bruce in White Angel. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.